Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today's deck was recorded during the early Axis event, so thank you to Wizards of the Coast for letting me participate. So I was able to use this fully unlocked account to preview some of the cool cards from the upcoming Brothers War expansion. And today I have in front of you Mono Black Aggro, updated with the Brothers War. And we've got quite a few new additions, the main ones being Misery's Shadow, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two Shade at Rare, saying if a creature an opponent controls would die, Exile it instead, it's another Exile effect to complement our Graveyard Trespasser. It is sometimes a bit of a nombo since you would rather leave creatures in the opponent's graveyard to then exile and drain the opponent, but you can always drain your own creatures with Trespasser, and Shadow is mostly still an upside to exile opposing creatures. And then more importantly, we can pay one generic mana to give Shadow plus one plus one until end of turn. So an awesome mana sink at any point in the game. The threat of activation is always there, so you can attack before playing anything in our first main phase, have all our mana untapped, the opponent has to respect the ability for Shadow to get bigger, so it'll often end up taking damage, and then we can pump the Shadow accordingly and still play more spells second main, and then once we get to the late game, once we have a lot of mana, Shadow will completely take over the game. And then another great addition is the Phyrexian Flesh Gorger. It's a 7 drop, but we can cast it for 3 mana thanks to Prototype, in which case it's a 3-3 with Menace, a Life Link, and Ward, which forces the opponent to pay life equal to the Flesh Gorger's power. So now if the opponent tries to kill it, it's going to cost them 3 life at the very least. So that's a great addition to an aggressive black deck. And the life link also helps out in other aggro matchups. And if we ever get to 7 mana, we can cast it as a 7 mana 7-5 seven with the same abilities. And then another addition is Gix, Yogmoth Praetor, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary Phyrexian Praetor, saying whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may pay one life if they do draw a card. So a great source of extra card advantage. Probably not going to use the 7 mana ability very often, but it's also there in case you get to it. So Gix, great in combination with Shieldred, of course, which can offset the life loss and turn it into extra life gain while still punishing the opponent for drawing extra cards. So Shieldred still definitely a staple of these black aggro decks that hasn't changed. And then in the removal department I've made a few tweaks including now three copies of Go for the Throat, two mana to destroy target non-artifact creature. So there are a few limitations if the opponent has their own Flesh Gorger or some of the new shiny prototype creatures from the Brothers War, you might not be able to kill them, but at least you don't always have to pay the two life that you have to do with Infernal Grasp. So I'm kind of liking a split of Go for the Throat and Infernal Grasp, great for killing opposing shield roots and other large creatures and then the final new addition is Mishra's Foundry in the mana base. Four copies, so creature lands are back finally. Two mana to turn into a 2-2 two -two assembly worker artifact creature until end of turn. And can also pay one mana, tap it, and then target attacking assembly worker gets plus two plus two until end of turn. Can be relevant if you have multiple copies of Mishra's Foundry in play, in case you can maybe pump one up to a 4-4. Four -four. So that's another great addition for any aggressive deck, especially monocolored ones that can easily make room for Mishra's Foundry. So yeah, taking a look at the rest of the deck, in case you're not familiar with Mono Black Aggro, still have the full set of Evolved Sleeper, another great 1-drop that can slowly level up over time, turning into a 2-2, then a 3-3 Death Touch, and eventually getting extra counters and drawing cards. Then we've got Cold Conscript as another 1-drop to apply pressure, can also get it back from the graveyard, Good synergy with Liliana of the Veil, vale, which is still a staple in these black aggro decks. Can minus two to make the opponent sacrifice a creature, or plus one to make each player discard a card. So that also incentivizes us to keep a low curve, as opposed to playing lots of five drops like Invoke Despair, which could also be an option in mono black aggro, and I've definitely seen it before. But Liliana does incentivize us to keep the curve low, and Invoke Despair can now also be a little awkward to cast if we happen to draw multiple copies of Mishra's Foundry, so that's another strike again. Against it. And then instead we can spend our mana in the late game on pumping Misery's Shadow and Evolve Sleeper, so there's definitely no shortage of mana sinks even with Mishra's Foundry now too, so Liliana is still an excellent addition to this deck. Then a cut down or one mana removal spell of choice, killing a creature with total power and toughness 5 or less. We've got Infernal Grasp to complement Go for the Throat now. And then Tenacious Underdog, yet another mana sink, 2 mana 3 2, and then can blitz out of the graveyard for 4 mana at the cost of 2 life, in which case it enters with haste and we have to sacrifice it end of turn, but it will also draw a card. 
And then at 3 mana, still 3 copies of Graveyard Trespasser as another way to exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, maybe drain them in the process, and if it ever switches to Knight, which we can now achieve pretty easily by just spending our mana activating our various creatures, we can also turn it into a 4-4 instead that can exile multiple cards. And then not sure what the split should be between Trespasser and Flash Gorger, trying out a 3-2 and two split for now, and we'll see how they perform. And then besides our Mishra's Foundry, we also have an Abandoned Mire in our mana base. 25 lands total might seem like a bit much for a deck that kind of tops out at 4 mana and mostly just needs 3 mana to operate. But again, we have so many mana sinks between Sleeper, we've got Underdog, Shadow, Mishra's Foundry, that we're not really gonna struggle to use up all our mana. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little slow to get going. Maybe slow enough to mulligan, actually. No one or two mana creature. On the draw, I think this would be slightly better since we have the removal, but uh, on the play, I think we need more pressure. Alright, this will do. Not an exciting hand by any means, but uh, at least I've got Underdog into Shadow. No cut down from our opponent, at least. And we might be playing a mirror match. Opponent's got the shadow. I'm fine going for a trade. Now I guess it will exile the underdog. So that's a, a bit of a drawback. But we keep Infernal Grasp for the opponent's 3-drop. And Trespasser was going to exile underdog anyway. Evolved Sleeper is not bad, so I can attack for two, and then if they block we pump, and then if not I can play Sleeper and level up twice. And I think I'll level up right now to play around a top decked cutdown, although I guess I could cut down the shadow, so I'll just pass here with Infernal Grasp available too. It's going to be Shieldred, which I'll happily kill. Can kill it now, can kill it next turn, doesn't really make a difference. Alright, now we can play a Flesh Gorger if we'd like. After playing a land so we can threaten to pump both creatures past the Trespasser. Probably just level up Sleeper once and play a Flesh Gorger. So having all these mana sinks is pretty great. Opponent doesn't know which creature they can block. A second shield root could be problematic, although then we can still attack into it with Sleeper and Shadow. And I guess Flesh Gorger would still trade for Trespasser. Opponent's got the Infernal Grasp, that's also pretty good. Would have liked to have Sleeper as a way to draw more cards. But at least we're not going to lose the race with Flesh Gorger attacking past Trespasser. Go for the throat. Doesn't quite kill Trespasser, sadly. Uh, since we don't have a card to discard. So this is going to switch to Knight, which does transform both of them into 4-4s. Four so that's not ideal. But um, yeah, I guess I could leave Misery's Shadow back to block. Or I can attack with it and pump it up to a 7-7. Seven, seven and then essentially put them to 3, so then Flash Gorger could be lethal by itself. Yeah, Misery Shadow, definitely impressing here, and our opponent forced to chump it. So that solves most of our problems too. Exiled by Misery Shadow, so Trespasser is also less effective. And Glutton forced to stay back. Ponon does have the Invoke Despair, however. That's a good one. So, get rid of Flash Gorger. Ponon gets to draw two. So if they can string together a few of those, we could be in a lot of trouble. If we play Yogmoth, Shadow would still trade for the Glutton. Which... Um, 
I don't know if that favors us. I guess we would have our Praetor in play with Go for the Throw to clear a path for it next turn. But if they have another Invoke Despair, that's kind of a disaster too. So I think we just attack with Shadow and then play Praetor's second main. Which is a bit weird. Alright, Bone and Trumps. So it could imply another Invoke coming up, but so be it. It's going to be Shieldred, which we can easily kill. And Underdog, which we can at some point exile as well. Don't lose any life, unlike Infernal Grasp and the Liliana. Can essentially exile the underdog here. Sadly, we cannot also play Praetor. If I play Praetor and attack, I guess it's better, because then we might actually draw a land to still play Liliana, since I doubt our opponent is jumping here, but you never know. And yeah, we'll just let damage happen to hope to draw a land. Cut down also works, I'll just do it now to make sure Underdog stays exiled in case they had removal for Shadow. Alright, opponent's got Tyrone Praetor. And the Crown. But yeah, Liliana can just make them sacrifice it, and then the uh, Shadow exiling also gets around a creature dying with Crown. So not very helpful here. Sweet, yeah, close game here in the mirror match. Invoke Despair, definitely powerful cards that you could easily include. Although the deck has so many mana sinks, especially now with four copies of Misery Shadow in addition to the four copies of Evolt Sleeper. And Invoke can also be a little awkward if you play an early Liliana and start plussing it. So you could easily play Invoke Despair, especially if enchantments are on the rise. But also with four Mishra's Foundries, it can be kind of awkward if you draw multiples. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Nice aggressive start. Conscript, turn to Foundry plus Underdog. Up against Green Aggro. So we might have to use a few removal spells early. Misery Shadow could also help if our opponent plays a Beast Caller, because that way we get to exile it so it doesn't distribute its plus one counters. The Amalgam, another new addition. Could be scary if they get to five mana. For now, probably just play underdog and pass. Happy to play defense, and then next turn I can play shadow plus maybe cut down in the same turn to exile something. Go for the throw, it does not answer Amalgam. Gwenna also might be worth taking out and can do so with cut down even. So, play shadow. And then could attack with Underdog, see what they do. And then still cut down Gwena. And if they trade for Pack Leader, that's fine, we can Blitz Underdog next turn. We might actually have been better off not playing Shadow before attacking, in case we draw a Graveyard Trespasser as a way to still exile the Pack Leader and drain the opponent for one. So we don't have an immediate answer to the 6-6. Six, six, but Misery Shadow can keep up with it. Augur of Autumn also good targets for Go for the Throat. And another pack leader. Alright, opponents down to one card in hand. Next turn they could make a 6-6. Six, six, and they're considering an attack with Amalgam. Don't think I'm willing to double block and lose my shadow, but opponent doesn't even offer. And Sleeper was a good draw too. Alright, so definitely gonna go for the Throat Augur before they gain any additional card advantage. And then I can play Sleeper level up. Question is whether I want to attack with Misery Shadow first. Yeah, Threat of Activation means they're probably just gonna take two. Unless they want to double block and trade. 
which is fine by me. Alright, opponent takes it. Play Sleeper. And uh, I guess we'll pass, represent another cut down. But I'll be a leveling up Sleeper, and then next turn we have a ton of options between level up Sleeper, Pump Shadow, Blitz Underdog, Mishra's Foundry. So this deck has no shortage of ways to use its mana, which is why I play a relatively high land count for an aggro deck. Oops, forgot to level up Sleeper there. That's okay. Attack with Shadow. And that's probably it. So Pump Shadow twice. And the rest of my mana can go to Evolved Sleeper. Opponent will be able to make a 6-6. Six, six. But I don't feel like using Go for the Throat on the Stalwart, since I could just draw land and activate Amalgam. And then I could still decide to trade Sleeper as a Death Toucher. That's probably fine, actually, since we have Underdog for card advantage. So I guess the missed level up didn't end up making a huge difference. Trespasser, yeah. Had we made the play earlier, I could have maybe drained the opponent for one. Can still exile my own Evolved Sleeper. Although I'm also not hating Blitz Underdog. If I play Trespasser, Shadow still gets to grow up to a 4-4. Yeah, that's good enough. So let's attack. Could see Stalwart trade for Conscript. Opponent just takes it. And then next turn we should be able to close out the game. can always exile my own underdog with Trespasser for an extra point of damage. And if our opponent plays a large creature like the various 5 drops, we can still go for the throat. Amalgam at 5, I guess we cannot kill. Although we can still attack into it with our shadow. Just goes to show how good it is and awkwardly drew both copies of go for the throat instead of infernal grasp. I guess even all 3 copies of this game. Alright, so Shadow still clear to attack, and that's probably it. What if I go for the throat both of their other creatures, then we still don't have lethal. Probably see Stalwart chumping. Yep, that happens. And then do I Blitz Underdog just to draw, and then we'll let it switch to Knights, maybe go for the throat pack leader. And if they make a 15-15, I think we can uh, go wide to still kill our opponent. Defiler is fine too. So now we can just go for the throw twice. Untap and attack for lethal. And then even with a land, we cannot quite activate Foundry and Blitz Underdog, but we're getting close. So yeah, slight Nombo with Shadow and Graveyard Trespasser, but they're both amazing cards. Alright, this also works. Underdog. You can get exiled. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine, especially if we pick up a third land on curve. For now, underdog or shadow, play underdog. Put on blue-black, sadly no 3-drop, but can still add a shadow to the board. Opponent Asper colors with an Urza, dies to Liliana. No more distractions. Let's make this quick. And then now we can keep up the pressure while also making the opponent discard. 
or Fiend dies to cut down. So we have options. If I plus, probably discard one of my creatures, since I can use the extra mana for Shadow. And between Trespasser and Flash Gorger, at this point probably prefer Flash Gorger for the extra damage. And then cut down Rafine, it's gonna cost me an extra mana. So I can either keep up Gopher the Throat or Pump Shadow. Let's Pump Shadow. Next turn we can minus two Liliana once again. Maybe play Flesh Gorger, maybe activate Foundry. Opponent's in trouble. And our opponent explodes. Quick one here against Esper, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is not amazing. We have some early pressure with Conscript, but then double removal and that's kind of it. No double black either. Yeah, this could be a mulligan. This is a little bit better. And probably hang on to one cut down. And one underdog can go. Evolved Sleeper might be the preferred turn one play, although probably still gonna play a two drop next turn. So I'll hang on to the Sleeper for now. And play Underdog. Jewel Thief we cannot cut down, although Underdog can attack into it. And then could play Misery Shadow to try and exile first. Probably not super relevant for Jewel Thief to be exiled. Ooh, Stimulus Package. Okay. Can start making 1-1 one -one Citizens. And I think I'm okay double blocking Jewel Thief since we have another sleeper coming up. Step one attack. And then plan is to play sleeper and I can level it up twice so I don't think we're pumping shadow. Probably better to just level up once and then keep returning Conscript as an option in case of a board wipe. Another Jewel Thief instead. Plenty of treasures already. So that's quite scary. Liliana can not really do much since they would just make a 1-1 in response. If I cut down they just make another 1-1. It would be a way to maybe force them to use some treasure tokens. I think I'd rather just attack with all and then see what happens. And then we can maybe use Liliana to pressure their hands. Alright, opponent's gonna start using Package. Trump's Shadow. Okay, so probably fine to level up Sleeper then. And pass with Cut Down available. Something like Devilish Valley shows up, we could just die out of nowhere. Another Stimulus Package, alright. Maybe your opponent's playing the uh, seven mana sorcery that turns your permanence into additional cards since package makes so many permanents at once. But your opponent's down to three in the meantime, so at least we'll force them to cash in some of those treasures. So if I go Liliana minus, that just 
trades for a treasure token, so not that impressive. Play a land attack. I think I'm okay using cut down before blockers. Okay, jump everything. Can grow shadow twice, still play Liliana. And then start flossing. Enough with the mysteries. I and we'll see what happens here. Point on discarding team. Elementalist. Definitely points towards some sort of combo. And yeah, there's over the top, 7 mana. And uh, yeah, that's not quite the result they wanted. As we get Shieldred and Liliana on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Plenty of ways to draw cards with Double Sleeper, Praetor and Underdog. No removal, which could come back to bite us, but we'll see. Being on the play also helps. So we're less likely to be on the back foot. And I could go with another Sleeper, level up the current one, or I can play Underdog. Both fine options. Kind of like deploying another Sleeper, even though it's easier to spends remaining mana on sleeper later so maybe i should still play underdog although it is true that we maybe are kind of choked on the black mana we have so maybe this is still fine and hope to play gigs next turn shield road can offset the life loss from the ability so we still get ahead in the exchange but I'm probably keeping up removal, so if I play our Praetor, it's unlikely to work. So I'll just attack, level up the second sleeper, play underdog. I do have to watch out for the potential new 3 damage sweeper, which would kill everything. So that's still potentially a reason to take a different approach. But yeah, even if I level up here, our creatures would still die. I think we still stick to the plan and just hope they don't have the... 3 damage sorcery. But it does seem like that's potentially incoming here. Alright, a braid to kill sleeper, in which case probably no sweeper incoming at least. And we played around a braid by not playing our Yogmoth's Praetor. Okay, so now... Playing Shieldred before the second chapter is usually good value. So we'll hit with Underdog. And I guess Sleeper with the threat of activation, and then we can play Shieldred second main. Opponent takes a trade. That's good. And if our opponent wants to loot now, it's gonna hurt. And in fact, it's going to hurt enough for them to concede. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one sleeper, turn two, level it up. And can play another sleeper too now. Harvester can get in the way, cannot use go for the throat, but that's okay, we'll just attack into it and then Trespaster can exile it so it doesn't come back with an earth, assuming they trade for the 2-2 sleeper. Next turn Shieldred, so we're curving nicely, still have Sleeper and Foundry as Leftover mana sinks. 
Right, it's gonna be the transmigrants. Does not block. Cut down, kill sleeper, sadly. Okay, Liliana can probably wait, just attack and play shield roots, and I'm fine exiling my own creature to drain the opponent for one. So they could have some instant speed removal for shield roots. And yep, Infernal Grasp at least still costing two life, so go for the throw it would have been better in their spots. Their own sleeper we can go for the throat or Liliana minus or even cut down. I think cut down makes sense and then I can fire up Mishra's Foundry. And then Liliana could minus since it's not close to coming back. So they don't really want to plus and discard go for the throat. And then we can exile the uh, transmigrant anyway to prevent it from coming back. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Bonus down to six in the meantime. Kind of hoping they tap out for shielded. Or uh, Gix also works. Plus misery shadow. Okay. Well, double go for the throat. We'll clear those. Yeah, so far I think Go for the Throat has been a nice addition to our removal suite. Don't know if you quite want to cut all copies of Infernal Grasp, since there are still some big creatures out there that are artifacts. But I've been happy with the mix so far. Could have finally activated our uh, Mishra's Foundry here, but yeah, our opponent's dead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems okay. We'll need to pick up a few lands. Turn one Wormlets can grow as they play Artifact. For now, probably okay to still play Conscripts. Turn two Honor Guard. Okay. Well, can attack, play Double Sleeper. Can wait on cut down. Honor Guard could imply some auras being in our future, but at least Death Touch is still a way to block the 3 1. Right, Opportunists makes tapped Power Stone, grows Wormlets. And do we trade for Honor Guard? Yeah, seems fine. So now, cannot quite play Gix and level up Sleeper to attack with both, but I could play Gix just attack with Conscripts to kind of force a trade. Alternatively, I could cut down while the Wormlet is small, but the problem with that play is that it doesn't really spend my author mana, I can only level up Sleeper once, so it's mana inefficient. So I think playing Gix and then just attacking with Conscript is fine. Kind of force a trade here. If not, we get to draw. And next turn, Shield Road is looking good. Briarbridge Tracker, good synergy with a Wormlet as well. And we'll take six. Okay, I think just Shield Road and pass. Don't really want to trade for Tracker. And then it's going to be tricky for them to remove shield roots without losing a creature in the process. Ooh, a clay champion as an 8 8. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good. Wormlot a 4 4. Opponent passes. Cutdown's not looking too great here. So Evolve Sleeper can also gain Death Touch, so that's a way to trade for Champion. But I don't think we're attacking, unless we want to attack with Shieldred and play a replacement Shieldred. Opponent's more likely to take it, however, and then we lose a good blocker. Is that enough of a concern? Nah, let's attack. 
And if they try and double block with the opportunist, we could punish with cut down. So we get to draw with Gix and gain two life with Shieldred to offset it. And then now Conscript. Pass with Sleeper and Cut Down available. Could even jump with Foundry if needed. Audacity for Trample. Okay, that's scary. Although we still have a Death Touch as an option here. Opponent going for a big attack. I guess I'll move to blocks. And then if I level this up to a 3-3, three, three, still take 7 trample plus 4. Gets us pretty low, but might be worth a trade here. And then next turn we can maybe double lock the wormlets more easily. We fall to two, and Pona draws, which will drain them with Shieldred as well. Another Clay Champion, that's trouble. Wormlord gains Death Touch once again. Back up Sleeper. Okay, so opponent's at ten. What if I fire up Foundry attack with all? Then, if they take it, they would be dead. So if they block Conscript, they would still die in their draw step. So they're more likely to trade for Shieldred. But then I also leave myself vulnerable to Wormlet killing me on the way back. Although we do have Sleeper as a potential blocker. Unless they can give Wormlet Trample, since I wouldn't be able to level up Sleeper to a 3-3. So probably no huge upside to an all-out attack, but I could attack with Shieldreds to offer the trade. And then play another Sleeper. And hope to dodge another Audacity. One card left, opponent sacrifices the clue. Wormlet loses Death Touch. Opponent drained by Shieldred. Opponent's at two life. They're gonna go for a desperation attack. And we can level up Sleeper to trade for Champion. And then still kill Pack Leader as well. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So yeah, Mono Green Auras could be an interesting new archetype with Clay Champion. Especially if you can give a trample, either with Audacity or with Kodama, which will give modified creatures trample. So looking forward to trying out some mono green decks in the future too. But yeah, overall this mono black aggro deck definitely performed. Definitely impressed by the uh, Shadow at 2 mana, being a great mana sink in the late game. Not quite as impressed by Mishra's Foundry so far, since we haven't really had time to activate it, but it's probably also a feature of Best of One being more aggressive and featuring fewer control decks where you get to the stages where Mishra's Foundry would become more useful. And I think as the metagame progresses, decks become slightly grindier with more interaction. A card like Mishra's Foundry is going to have its time to shine, and not only mono black aggro, but in many other monocolored aggro decks. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.